Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. We want to talk about a guy and a team that certainly know how to make headlines. That is the Colorado Buffaloes and Shador Sanders, their star quarterback. Okay, so it's interesting. I am pro Coach Prime. I believe this is a guy that went from one and eleven to four and eight last year, and really, like he elevated the program. It wasn't perfect. It did not end well. But I'm kind of a believer, which we'll get into in a second. At the same time, uh, Coach Prime and Shador and, and, and everybody involved in Colorado, they certainly know how to make headlines. And I saw a fascinating headline. Credit to producer Matt. He found this one for me. Uh, as Shador Sanders had a very bold statement that he dropped on, I guess it would have been Wednesday. But apparently Shador Sanders has a new podcast. Uh, it's with Overtime. And he had a bunch of guys in the building with him. I, I don't know if that's going to be an everyday thing. I assume it won't be once the season starts. But Cam Ward from Miami was there. The Virginia Tech quarterback was there. And they were kind of just talking about a lot of different things. And it started with EA Sports College football game. But then it got into a personal ranking. And so Shador Sanders basically was like, yeah, you know, the, uh, the top three in EA, it's uh, Georgia, Ohio State, and Oregon. That's, I mean, that's factually correct. That's true. But then one of the guys on the couch asked, they said, well, Shador, who are your top three teams going into this year? Like in terms of actually this season, who do you believe are the top three teams in the sport? And he hesitated for a second. He smiled. He said, well, George is number one, won two of the three last, the two of the three national, two of the last three national championships. They got to be there. Uh, then probably I'd go Colorado two. And Miami three. And so one, the Miami reference was again, Cam Ward was on the couch. Cam Ward played at Washington state last year. And he basically said, I'd love to play you again. Uh, I want revenge for last year, but I love the confidence. I love the borderline arrogance of Shador Sanders saying he believes Colorado is the second best team in college football this year. Now I'll be honest. I'm going to be totally transparent. I don't think Colorado is the second best team in the country. Crazy. I know. But I'll also add this. I don't think Colorado is nearly as bad as people think they are. And I think bluntly, there is a very good chance they could actually surprise some people this year. So let's go ahead and get into it. And again, to be clear, not saying that in my personal AT poll, forget the AP, we got the AT poll on this show. Not saying that in the AT poll, Colorado is number two. But at the same time, a couple of things stand out. One, let's go back to last year. As I said, Finish four and eight. Nobody wants to be four and eight. Nobody wants to be four and eight. But let's also call a spade a spade. They were one and 11 the year before. That is a 400% win improvement. And it's worth noting, there was a couple really close games there. Lost on a last second field goal to Arizona, a walk-off field goal, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, they were up huge against Stanford, blew a lead, ended up losing in overtime. Uh, Utah was a touchdown game. Oregon State was a touchdown game. There were winnable games on the schedule that could have gotten them to bowl eligibility, okay? And so that's one. But two, when I looked at this team, when I look at this team, excuse me, and I was doing some, some Big 12 deep dives this year, I think, or, or this week, I was kind of prepping my Big 12 stuff. I think people are going to be surprised at how talented Colorado is, how much more talent has been brought into the program, and the reality that this team just might be better than people think. Bottom line. I believe that if you look at it, Colorado has essentially gotten better at basically every single position group on the field, okay? So first off, let's start with Shador because there's this narrative about Shador that he's this or that he's that or that he's what. It's like, this is the guy. Here is Shador Sanders' stats from last year for everybody who says that he's either overrated or irrelevant or whatever. Last year, Shador Sanders, remember, moving up from the FCS level, the HBCU level, Jackson State, Finished with 3,200 yards passing, 69% completion percentage, 27 touchdowns, three interceptions, okay? So if that is a down season, if that is an overrated season, then guess what? If that is the case, 
I think every quarterback in America would love to have the down season, the overrated season that Shador Sanders had. 27 touchdowns, three interceptions, 69% completion percent. But beyond that, you look at the personnel around him. Listen, you could criticize Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. He upgraded basically every position group, okay? First off, O-line was abysmal last year. Uh, how about this? You know, you know the quarterbacks were sacked 56 times last year, most in college football? So Shador, keep in mind, 27 touchdowns, three interceptions, 69% completion percentage, while getting sacked 56 times. Now, not all of it was his fault. I mean, not all of it was the O-line's fault. Sometimes he held onto the ball too long, but you can sack 56 times. That's crazy. Well, the O-line has improved. We know about Jordan Seaton, five-star, number one recruit in America at that position. And before you tell me, oh, five stars can't play college football at, on the offensive line. Alabama had the number one rated offensive tackle in last year's class, Caden Proctor, and he started every game. So don't tell me a freshman can't play, can't make an impact. Other side of the line, you have uh, Khalil Benson, who started every game in Indiana last year, gave up one sack the entire season. And the rest of the O-line is basically dudes from the Power 5 level. Offensive guard from Houston, a couple other guys, can't remember everybody off the top of my head. You move to the skill positions. One running back, Dallas Hayden, uh, Dallin Hayden, excuse me, from Ohio State, he is really good. And that wide receiver room might actually be the, like, I'm not going to say it's better than Ohio State or Texas or whoever. It's really freaking good, though. Last year, Jimmy Horn finished with, uh, let's see here, 58 catches, six touchdowns. Travis Hunter, 50, 57 catches, five touchdowns. They're both back. Not great at math, but if my math is correct there, that's 115 catches just between those two. Thought it was interesting. Watched a little bit of their spring game a few months ago. Lejante Wester transfer from Florida Atlantic. He is a guy, had over 100 receptions, 1,000 yards receiving. Him and Shador seem to really connect through the air. So you have those, those three guys at, at the wide receiver room. You brought in a couple four or five stars. Draylon Miller was committed to Texas A&M. He flips. Cam Michael, people thought he was going to Georgia. He flips to Colorado. Wide receiver room is deep and good. Then on defense, let me also say, like, criticize if you want. They upgraded at every position. Defensive line, B.J. Green was all Pac-12 at Arizona State last year. He's there. Sam Okolona from uh, Pitt was Pitt's best defensive line. I mean, Quincy Wiggins, top 50 recruit from LSU. I'm bringing it up to very simply say, they got dudes out of the portal that everybody wanted. They got dudes out of the portal that were highly successful at the power five level. Now, to be clear, you got to perform, you got to do it. And I understand that when you're talking about the Bamas and the Georgias and the whoever's, the Texases, I get that it's not just one guy. It's not just two guys. It's a roster full of them. And I'm not saying Colorado was there. But they went 4-8 and eight last year, a couple close games, and they have upgraded literally every single position group. Lastly, before we get to Aaron Wright, Aaron Wrong, it is worth noting, like, the one thing I will say, that schedule is actually really tough by Big 12 standards, okay? Remember, they're in the new Big 12. Utah, Arizona, Arizona State come with them. Uh, Oklahoma State won 11 games last year, played Texas in the Big 12 championship game. Uh, Kansas could be good. Kansas State should be really good as well. Well, I looked it up today. You know of the teams that were picked to finish in the, the the first five teams in the Big 12, in some order were Utah, Oklahoma State, Kansas, Kansas State. And remember, Arizona won 10 games last year and returns basically everybody. Lost their coach, Jed Fish, to Washington, but Arizona won 10 games, beat Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl. Colorado plays all of those teams, including a final three of Utah, Oklahoma State, uh, and at Kansas to close the year. So we'll see what happens. Certainly don't think that Colorado is probably the number two team in the country. But again, do I think this team is better than a lot of people think? Do I think they can surprise some people? And bluntly, listen, even with that schedule, do I think they can win seven, eight, nine games? I absolutely do. Now they got to do it on the field. But to quote Coach Prime, I believe, I believe in what well, Coach Prime. Not quite sure. I believe they're number two in the country, but I love the confidence of Shador Sanders, and I cannot wait. Remember, Colorado opens that first Thursday. So we're talking four weeks from today, 28 days from right now. Colorado football will be playing North Dakota State. 
and I can't wait.